Okay, great. Um, thank you uh, for joining us today. Uh, we have an interesting session coming up. Uh, this is ingest, analyze, and manage your logs with OCI logging. My name is Akshay uh, Parthasarathy. I am the moderator for this session. Um, I am a principal product marketing director for Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, focused on things like manageability, uh, DevOps, and cloud native. So uh, I am. Uh, I, it's my pleasure to. Uh, introduce you to Mohammed Slim, who is the Senior Principal Product Manager for OCI Observability and the Logging Service. Um, if you want to find out more about these services, uh, you can go to oracle.com slash manageability or oracle.com slash DevOps. You can find out more about logging and the related services there. We will be taking pre uh, questions through the entire session. Uh, so if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to send them over to us and we'll, get, uh, and we'll get to them as we see them. There will also be a dedicated Q&A at the end. Uh, so I uh, welcome you to uh, stay, stick on till the end and attend the Q&A too. So without further ado, I'd like to pass it over to Mohammed to uh, tell us more about ingest, analyze, and manage your logs with OCI logging. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mohamed Sleem. I'm a product manager on the OCI observability team. And today we're really excited to talk to you guys about a really cool topic. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the brand new OCI logging service. And we're gonna walk through how you can ingest, analyze and manage all of your logs with OCI logging. So we have a pretty jam packed agenda today, uh, but we're gonna start off with you know, the big picture overview. What does OCI logging actually mean to you? Where does it fit in the big picture? Uh, after that, we're gonna walk through a deep dive of the product itself. So what are the key features? What are the value propositions? What can you do with it? Uh, after that, we're gonna walk through some demos that kind of give you both a high level overview of the product, as well as some pretty cool use cases that you can go try it yourself right now. And then after that, we'll go in with a summary and then open it up with Q and A. So let's get started. So let's talk about how OCI logging fits in the big picture. So in general, when you're running workloads in the cloud, there are gonna be two key kinds of things that you want to observe. So first, you're gonna have resources that are running in OCI as part of OCI services. So for example, you can have virtual cloud networking, you can have object storage, you can have load balancers. All of these things are managed OCI resources that emit critical things that you wanna observe. The second class of things is gonna be customer applications or things that you control yourself. For example, this could be an application running on top of OCI, an application running in, on on-premise or an application running in another cloud. But at the same time, these things also emit things that you want to observe. So whether it's something that's coming from an OCI service or something that's coming from your own application, there are four key data types or four key types of things that you naturally want to observe. So the first is audit. So every single resource, when it's created, when it's deleted, when it actually goes through and someone manipulates or edits that resource, it emits an audit event. This audit event captures a clean record that shows you who made the change, what, ta what change did they attempt to make, and what was the effective before and after. This is enabled for you automatically for free for all of your resources. So this is one key data type or one key thing you want to observe. Another is cloud events. So anytime a resource uh, comes up and comes down, it emits this ephemeral event that says, hey, I've changed states. For example, you can have an instance that says, hey, I've been rebooted, or you can have a bucket that says I've been deleted. You can subscribe to these events and you can observe them and you can take action on them. The third type of data that you want to observe is logs. So obviously for your infrastructure, you can have, you know, your VCNs can emit flow logs and your applications can also emit their own performance, uh, performance and diagnostic logs. But regardless if it's something running in OCI or something in, in the application, it's, they both emit logs that you want to observe. And most likely you want to observe them and search them in the same spot. Finally, there are metrics. So for example, you can have your uh, compute hosts have their own individual metrics that says how memory and CPU is behaving, as well as your own application can have instrumented metrics, for example, for latency and availability and things relevant to your specific scenario. So those are the four key data types that you can technically observe in this big picture. And OCI actually provides you with a tool set that lets you collect, monitor, and analyze 
all of those key data sets. So for example, there is the audit service that exists. Uh, this is a free service that's already live today. There is OCI events, which allows you to subscribe to the cloud events that I talked about and to take action on them. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about logging, where how it actually brings in all of those logs from uh, your resources and your applications. And then finally, there's OCI monitoring, which brings in your metrics. So the cool thing about all of these tools is they all interop and work together. And actually, OCI logging is bringing in a lot of the cool features that existed in audit and a lot of the features that existed in events. So what that means is with OCI logging, you can come in and you can view your audit logs. And you can actually go in and set up rules on top of events. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, but in general, when you actually want to go act, move, or you know, transport these key data types, uh, we have one common product that lets you do this. It's called Service Connector Hub. Service Connector Hub lets you go in and, for example, invoke a function or emit a notification or go in and write those things to a stream. But regardless if it's audit or if it's event or if it's uh, logging, there's one common interface where you're able to move all this. So if we step back at a high level, again, you have resources that are running in OCI, you have your own applications, they all emit critical data types and we have key tools that allow you to collect, monitor and move and take action on all of these things. So now that we talked about where OCI logging fits in the big picture, now let's go ahead and do a deep dive to see what OCI logging can actually do for you. So to start off, what is OCI logging? So OCI logging is your official entry point to anything related to logs inside of OCI. So what that means is it gives you a centralized log management platform that makes it easy with one click to turn on logging across your entire fleet. It brings all of the logs that you care about into one system. So your audit logs, your infrastructure logs, your database and your application logs all come in one system where you can securely manage them. And now it also gives you a search and correlation language where you can go ahead and actually go in and slice and dice your logs in one clean layer cake view. On top of that, you can actually take action on every single log line with Service Connector Hub. It allows you to go ahead and take action as well as easily move and, and export your logs to any other destination, including third party observability tools. Best of all, OCI logging is built on open standards. So what that means is anytime a log line is ingested from your applications, it's actually leveraging FluentD that allows you to go in and, and enrich, parse, and leverage all of the open source community plugins that exist. And whenever any log line that comes in the system, whether it's something from your audit logs, your infrastructure or applications, we automatically normalize it into the CNCF Cloud Native Computing Foundation Cloud Events 1.0 format. And what that gives you is a common way and an, and an open way to ingest your logs, as well as storing your logs in an open format that can be consumed by other uh, cloud native tools, as well as cloud providers. So when we look at into what OCI logging can actually do, we can kind of break it into three key value propositions. The first is we want to give you the ability to collect and manage everything that has to do with logs inside of OCI in one view. Second, once those logs are in the system, we want to make sure that you're able to search and analyze them. So what that means is you can go ahead and, uh, and perform investigations and do all the things that you want to do on top of logs. And then finally, the last key pillar is we want you to be able to easily export and take action. So I'm going to go ahead and do a deep dive into each one of these and describe a little bit more detail what it actually means for you. So let's talk about collecting and managing. So when we say that uh, in the past that you have, you know, logs that can come from your OCI services, logs that can come from your own customer generated applications, one of the key things that customers love and crave is to have all of those things just come in one, one spot. Uh, it's kind of a pain for your DevOps teams and, uh, and, and, and really for anyone that has to touch the logs to have to go jump around, you know, a different audit product, a different, uh, you know, network logging product, a different, uh, you know, application logging product. What we wanted to do is to give you a central spot uh, for all of these logs to come in. And what that means is anything that comes out of an OCI resource, you should be able to turn on logging with one easy click. So we give you a, a common way and an easy way to, for example, enable logging on a load balancer or an object storage bucket, as well as to install an agent and actually get logs from it from an OCI instance. 
all of the actual application logs that are ingested in the system are actually leveraging FluentD behind the scenes. So what that means is you actually get support for all of the open source plugins and the ability to pre-process and enrich and classify and tag your data however you want. If there's if there's a plugin that you don't see exists, you can actually go ahead and actually build it yourself as well. There's a robust framework to go in and be able to define your own parsers and define your own um, uh, ways to actually pre-process uh, your data. All of the log lines that are ingested into the system, whether it's something that is coming from you know, OCI resource or your own applications, are all secured with OCI IAM ad uh, identity. So what that means is you have a clean way to actually define who gets access to what logs. You have a clean way to define who gets access to even ingest a log. Uh, and all of this is kind of comes together with log groups. And I'm going to go ahead and, and go a little bit more detail about that. So what is a log group? So a log group is literally just a logical container for you to handle and manage all of the logs. So if you're, if you're familiar with an OCI compartment, right? So you, you can have a whole bunch of resources inside of a compartment and you can set policies on that compartment itself. What log groups allow you to do is that it gives you an initial granular level to go ahead and set access control on. So for example, I can have uh, you know some sensitive logs, for example, uh, logs that have some PII or logs that uh, technically are security logs or compliance logs, but I, what I can do is that I can put them in a very specific log group and I can lock down access to that log group by itself. And anytime someone attempts to change permissions, or anytime it someone attempts to access those logs, whether it's allowed or denied, all of those calls are audited and they're captured for you. And what that gives you is a simple way to actually lock down access to all of your logs inside of one system. So now that you have all of the logs in one system, the next thing you want to do is to be able to search and analyze them. So OCI login gives you a query language, a brand new query language that allows you to slice and dice your logs. And this is really powered by the cloud events open format. So what that allows you to do is that it allows you to have all of the log lines in a consistent and, and coherent way such that you can actually go in, for example, and slice by the source of the event, the type of the event. It gives you a common way to describe those things in your log lines, and that's done for you out of the box. So you can actually go ahead and search across one log, multiple logs, or really all logs in an entire region. It gives you the flexibility to correlate across different contexts. You can, you can do a whole bunch of slicing and dicing functions, for example, filtering, um, uh, aggregations, deduping, scalar functions, you name it. All the things that you're used to in your log language, log search language, you'll find available in this product as well. And also, it gives you the ability to save your searches and share those queries with your team members. So for example, uh, let's, uh, let's say that you go ahead and find a repro in a specific application log, you know, that repro uh, resolves down to a specific error. What you can do is you can actually save that query and then run it back as part of your playbook. You can also technically take that query and automate it with Service Connector Hub, which we'll talk about later. So the last, the last key pillar, the last key thing is really the ability to easily take action on a log. So what do we mean by that? A lot of times when you have logs coming into the system and you do an investigation, there's, re there's usually another step that you want to do to kind of close the DevOps loop and to automate the entire life cycle of the investigation. So what we provide you is an intuitive, if this, then that style rules engine. And really what that allows you to do is that it allows you to define these rules that take in, for example, let's say that you say, hey, anytime you see any error in my application log, then do something. So for example, I can go ahead and emit a notification with Oracle notification service. So I can go, for example, page, page my on call. I can go uh, integrate with Jira, PagerDuty. I can emit a log-based metric and integrate that with all of my existing dashboards and alarms. I can go invoke a function. Uh, I can also actually easily move the data as well to another destination. So I can go archive it to object storage, or I can push it to an Oracle stream where it can be connected with Kafka Connect to other third-party tools, for example, Splunk, Logarithm, etc. But really what this, what this uh, rules engine allows you to do is that it allows you to take control and close the loop on, on your actual log investigations. So if you see a repro that you no longer want to be woken up for or you no longer want it to go undetected, what you can do is you can actually go set up a rule to automatically trigger a function to remediate it. Or you can go emit a metric based on that log line that kind of feeds into your broader metric, uh, metric landscape. 
or you can go ahead and actually take all of the logs, for example, all of your flow logs and all of your audit logs, and you can archive them for long-term retention for compliance, or you can push them to an external SIM that you're using today. All of this is done for you very easily and out of the box with Service Connector Hub. Service Connector Hub is a service that, that is a sister product to OCI Logging um, that, that launched at around the same time. It's a free service that actually allows you to go ahead and do all of these things. So again, those are the three key value propositions of logging. And now that we kind of covered this, I wanna show you guys all of these things in action. So I wanna show you what it means to actually enable a log, what it means to actually search a log, and what it means to actually go ahead and export a log. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first demo that we're gonna go into is your top level, just product walkthrough. There's a lot going on with OCI logging, and we want to make sure that you understand the fundamentals of what are the key elements and things that you'll see in the product. So let's go ahead and take a look. So before you dive in, let's give you a quick introduction into all the key things that exist in the UX. So you'll find OCI logging in the left-hand nav, and you'll find that under Solutions and Platform. There you'll see the logging item. You can see that there's six key pages here. And we're gonna go into each one of these at a high level to give you an idea of what to expect when you use the product on day one. So the very first thing that you'll see is the search page. This is your home page for searching, analyzing, visualizing all of your logs in one single pane of glass. What that means is it brings in all of your infrastructure logs, your audit logs, your application logs, as well as logs from database all in one spot. The second page that we have is the log management page. Here you'll see a list of all the logs that exist in your compartment and log groups, as well as you'll have the ability to create new logs for your applications, as well as enable logs on your existing resources, such as load balancers and VCN flow logs. The third page is log groups. So log groups are just logical containers that allow you to manage and organize your logs in a coherent way. In this page, you're able to see all current log groups in a given compartment, as well as create and manage existing ones. The fourth page is agent configurations. Agent configurations allow you to define in a clean way which hosts you want to collect logs from and what specific logs you want to collect from those hosts. So for example, I can go in and say, I wanna go collect all of my error logs from my front end uh, application log fleet. Uh, and you can do that easily with agent configurations. And you, as you can see here, you can see the existing agent configurations in a given compartment, as well as creating a new one. The fifth page is service connectors. Service connectors allow you to move and take action on data in near real time. So for example, I could take all of my audit logs or all of my flow logs and write them to stream. And again, here you can see a list of all existing ones in my compartment, as well as the ability to create a new one. And then finally, we have the audit page, which gives you uh, a clean view into all of the actual audit events that are occurring in your given compartment. So for example, here you can see a timeline activity stream, and I can do additional filters based on user, resource type, and, and actions, as well as just typing in my own manual filters. So this is just a super quick introduction into what are the key things that exist in the product. We're gonna go into each one of these in more detail in later videos. So now that you have a high level idea of how the product looks and works in the console, let's talk about how you can enable your first log on an OCI resource. So as we mentioned before, logging brings in all of the logs that you care about from audit, your infrastructure and applications in one view. So in this case, what we're gonna show you is how easy it is to enable a log on a given resource and how it actually integrates into the rest of the system. So let's go ahead and take a look. OCI logging makes it very easy to enable logs on your existing OCI resources. So you can do this in two spots. You can do this first in the central log management page, or you could do it directly on the resource itself. I'll show you both today. So to start off, let's look at the log management page. You're gonna see this enable service logs UX, and you can when you click this button, the very first thing that you'll be prompted to do is to select the resource that you want to enable logs on. So here I'm gonna select the resource compartment where my resource lives. I'm gonna select the service of that resource. So for example, here, object storage, and then I'll select the actual resource itself. So in this case, I'm selecting my bucket. So every single resource can have different kinds of logs emitted for it. And this is what a log category is. So for example, here, you see that this bucket ha can emit read access logs as well as write access logs. Different resources have different log categories. So in this example, I'm gonna select read access events. 
And then finally, I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to name it my bucket read blogs. And that's it. And then you just click enable. And just like that, your log is being created for you. The second place where you can do this is actually directly on the resource itself. So to do this, you can navigate to the actual resource page. For example, here I'm on the resource page of my bucket and you'll see this brand new logs tab. So when you click this, you'll see the log that we created before, as well as all the kinds of logs that you can actually enable. So for example, here I can see that I can enable an additional write log that we saw before. So to do this on the resource page is very simple. You, you merely just click this um, uh, toggle, and then you'll see the UX here automatically pops up and has everything pre-filled for you. Where, for example, the actual uh, compartment, the log group, and as well as a predefined name for you. And all you have to do is click enable. And that's it. Just like that, I've enabled two logs on my bucket. And uh, as you can see, you can do it directly again in the log management page, as well as directly in the research page itself. Thank you. So that was just a quick overview of how easy it is you can enable logging on a resource. But sometimes you can have logs coming from your applications. And this could be coming from a whole bunch of hosts that are both inside and outside OCI. So in this demo, we're going to walk you through how you can configure log ingestion from your applications running inside OCI. So whenever you're running applications in the cloud, you can have logs coming from hundreds or even thousands of hosts. Agent configurations inside of OCI logging gives you a simple way to define and wrangle all of the log collection across your entire fleet. It gives you a simple three-step process to define exactly which hosts you want to collect logs from. After you selected that, then you can select which exact logs you want from those hosts. And then from there, you define exactly where you want those logs to go. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So to get to agent configurations, you want to come in from logging on the left-hand nav and select agent configurations. After that, you want to click create agent config. So one of the key prerequisites that you need to make sure that you have before you create an agent config is you want to make sure that your entire fleet or your hosts are already assigned to a dynamic group. So we have documentation that shows you how to do that. But at a high level, dynamic groups are an identity concept that allows you to, for example, to, to say all hosts with a specific tag belong to this group or all hosts in a specific compartment belong in, in that group. It's a very simple concept, but it's powerful and allows you to wrangle the selection of your fleet. So that's the first step. The second step is you need to make sure that you have the agent installed on your hosts. So for hosts running inside OCI, this is all, more often more than not automatically enabled for you. And to do this, you just simply have to go into the agent, uh, sorry, to the instance itself during creation or post creation and just simply toggle the I want met, uh, monitoring uh, plugin. Uh, we also have documentation that shows you how to do that in more detail, as well as how to do it for even non OCI hosts if you want to collect logs that way. Uh, but those are the two key prerequisites. But once you have that, uh, it's actually very simple to configure logging uh, across your entire fleet. So the very first thing is you want to give it a configuration name. So for example, here I'm going to say uh, my error log configuration. After that, you select the exact compartment where you want this uh, configuration to live. So we talked about how the very first step is you want to define exactly what are the hosts that I want to collect logs from. So to do this, you choose your host group and you can actually come in and select one of the pre uh, one of the pre created host groups that you have. If not, you can come in and actually go in and manage your dynamic groups uh, up top. So here I'm going to select, for example, uh, one of my already pre existing dynamic groups that already has my fleet. So you can actually add in more than one host group as well. So you can select, for example, another dynamic group, or you can even select a user group where you are actually given predefined API, uh, uh, authentication keys for your instances. So after you've defined exactly what are the groups that you are, what are the instances that you want to select logs from, now you can define specifically what are the log inputs that you want to collect from that fleet or from those hosts. So there's two kinds of log inputs that you can select. First is a Windows event log. So for example, here I can say, this is my um, um, uh, error channel, right? And then here you can actually select specific predefined channels auto, or you can actually write your own. Uh, you can also select a specific log path. So for example, here, if I say this is my error logs, I can actually select one or many paths specifically on that host. So here, for example, I can say I want var log and then star. 
Uh, one of the things you can also do on top of these is that, for example, you can come in and define additional parsers. So to do this, you select advanced parser options, and then here you can see that there's automatically pre-built parsers for you. So for example, you can, you can uh, if your logs are in JSON format or CSV, or if you have a specific regex pattern that you want to filter on or, or, or parse with, you can actually define this uh, directly within the config. In this case, I'm just going to leave it blank. So after you've defined exactly what are the logs, directories, or even event channels that you want, now you just say where you want it to go. So in this case, I'm going to select a specific uh, compartment where my log lives. I'm going to select a log group, and then I'm going to select my test log here. And then that's it. I've literally just defined what are the hosts that I want to collect logs from. I've defined what are the exact directories or paths as well as parsers that I want from those, uh, from those hosts. And then finally, I've defined where do I want those logs to go. And all of when you click create, automatically, all of these logs from across this entire fleet will begin flowing into this one common log object. And this log object will be persisted alongside your audit logs, your infrastructure logs, and everything. And we're going to walk into a little bit more detail of what it means to actually go in and view and explore those logs in the next demo. So now that we've seen how you can ingest logs from both your resources and your applications into the system, let's talk about what it means to actually search and analyze those logs all in one common view. Again, with OCI logging, you're able to actually search and analyze logs from audit, infrastructure, and applications all in one single pane of glass. So let's go take a look. So whenever you ingest a log into OCI logging, whether it's a log from your application or a log from your actual resources, all of these logs are stored in a central spot where they're normalized into a common format and made searchable for you. So what that means is in this central search page, I can explore, I can visualize, and I can slice and dice all of the logs coming from my applications, infrastructure, and database, and audit all in one spot. So let's take a look at this page and walk through what are the key elements, as well as show you some cool scenarios you can do. So the first thing that you'll see is this top section here. And the top, the first thing that you see is the filter field, which allows me to actually come in and type in specific filters. So for example, I can start typing and automatically it will populate all of the columns and the fields that exist in my log. So for example, here I could say where type equals, and it'll also populate all of the values that exist in my current scope. So this is a very easy way for you to come in and actually slice and dice by any property that exists in your logs. And also easily view all of the fields that you can actually match against. You can do existing properties as well as you can just do full text search if you need to. The second thing that you'll see is the actual like log scope uh, selector. So as we discussed before, you can have compartments, you can have log groups inside of compartments, and then inside of that you can have individual logs. You can actually choose to search over one log, two logs, or literally search over the entire compartment as well. OCI logging gives you the flexibility to search over whatever you want and whatever scope you define. So in this context, you can see that I already have results coming back uh, from all of the logs coming in my compartment. And here you can see that there's a whole bunch of events. For example, I have a front end error, I have back end error. Both of these are coming from my application logs, as well as a whole bunch of flow logs and audit events that are also coming into the system. So if we actually go in and expand one of these log lines, you'll see that automatically all of these fields are parsed and made searchable. So for example, here I could see a very clean message field. I could see the actual front end host. I could see the latency and the IP address. And all of this is done for me automatically when it's ingested into the system. And not only that, all of these log lines, whether it's coming from application or infrastructure or audit, is, is normalized into the open source cloud events format, which makes it easy and, and, uh, and provides me a common way to actually slice and dice my logs. So in this example, I can also go in and do visualizations. So here, I just took all of my actual events and did a very simple bar count of the number of events over time. I can also technically come in and do aggregations by specific fields that exist in my logs. So technically any log that exists, uh, any, any property that exists in my log, I can actually go in and do group bys. For example, I can go in and say, I want to group by the actual action. So here you can see I have a breakdown of the number of rejects, the number of accepts. Uh, I can also do it by type. 
So for example, here, you can see that I have majority of my logs that are coming in are flow logs, as well as I have some compute instance and service API calls that are happening as well. So one of the cool things that you can do is you can actually search everything in one spot. So what that means is, for example, let's take this front end error that's happening here, and you can see that it's happening from a very specific IP address. So when, because all of the logs are in one spot, what I can do is I can literally take this IP address, just paste it and hit enter. And what will happen is I'll get a stitch timeline view of all of the actual things that happened in my logs across everything. So here you can see, for example, that in this case, the, my front end received a request from this IP address. Here you can see the back end beginning to process this request, and you see all of the actual traffic happening off that NIC, off that machine, and then finally you can see the actual back end failing as well as the front end. So what this allows me to do is that it allows me to get a clean stitched timeline view. And because all of the logs are on one spot, it's very easy for me to do this cross uh, context search and do all of this advanced uh, correlation and analyzing. Thank you. So the final demo that we have today is to showcase how easy it is to actually export and take action on your logs with Service Connector Hub. Let's go take a look. OCI Logging and Service Connector Hub make it very easy for me to move, export, and take action on all of my logs. So that includes logs from my audit, from infrastructure, as well as logs from my application and database. So in this example, I'm gonna export all of my load balancer access logs to a stream. So to do this, I wanna create a connector. And the very first thing that you wanna specify is the connector name, a description for the connector, as well as the actual compartment where you want this connector to live. So for example here, I just named it Load Balancer Export, as well as just a rough description that says, hey, this is exporting my Load Balancer Access Logs to a stream. After that, you wanna actually configure the connector. So this is done in two or three very easy steps. First, you wanna select the source as logging and the destination as streaming. You can see there's other supported targets and destinations as well. For example, I can go invoke a function, I can emit a log-based metric, I can fire off a notification with the notification service, or I can archive the actual log to an object storage bucket. In this example, I'm just gonna go dump it to a stream. So after that, you wanna actually select what is the log that you want to be exported. So here, you can select the compartment where your logs live, the exact log group, as well as the individual log that you want to export. So for example, here, I can select exactly the load balancer access logs. I can also add in multiple logs into the scope. So for example, I can add in another log from my, uh, from my log group, or I can actually just choose to export the entire log group or the entire compartment. And this makes it very easy for me to actually only do everything that I need to with one connector. So in this case, I just want my load balancer access logs. The next thing that you wanna define is if you want additional filtering, for example, if I don't define a filter, I will get all of my load balancer access events into my stream, but I can actually define an additional filter that says only show me the actual entries, for example, where the load balancer status code does not equal 200. And all of this is actually done with the same search language that you saw in the search UX. So here you can see as I'm adding filters, the actual parameters and the actual query is being populated on the right hand side. So here, for example, I can also say, uh, also only when the backend status code equals 200. And now you can see here, the filters defined for me. So after I've defined my optional filters, I then can just configure exactly which stream that I want this to go to. And I can select the compartment as well as the exact stream that I want to go to. So in this example, I'm gonna go to my test stream. Uh, in some cases, you may have to create a policy. And to do this, you, all you have to do is just click Create. And then finally, you hit the Create button to create this entire connector. And just like that, I'm getting all of my load balancer access logs, specifically the entries that where the load balancer status code as well as the backend status code are not successful. And I'm getting all of that automatically written to my stream for me. Thank you. So that was just a quick intro into the key features of OCI logging and how you can ingest, manage, and analyze your logs all in one system. So to summarize, 
The Cloud Native Observability Framework in OCI gives you the ability to collect all the key data types that you care about, both from your own OCI services as well as your own applications that you run in the cloud or off cloud. This could be, for example, audit logs, cloud events, logs and metrics. But regardless, we give you a common way to actually go in and ingest all of those logs, both from OCI services and your own applications, as well as a way for you to actually in, uh, export and integrate those logs with other destinations, such as streaming, functions, notifications, and more. So with that, I'll open it up with questions, and I appreciate your time today. Thank you. OK, for um, additional resources, uh, these are the websites uh, for you to take a look at, oracle.com slash DevOps slash logging. Um, you can also find all of our manageability products listed under oracle.com slash manageability. Um, there's a free trial um, that you can avail of, uh, which includes, you know, obviously the, uh, the free allocations for logging and logging analytics. Um, for more webcasts and workshops similar to this, uh, you know, go to developer.oracle.com slash virtual events. So my name is Akshay uh, Parthasarathy. I am part of the product marketing team at Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. If you have any other questions about logging or Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, feel free to reach me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Handle on Twitter and LinkedIn are posted on the slide here. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today and for being so engaged. Um, thank you so much and we look forward to seeing you next time. We do have another Service Connector Hub webinar starting just about an hour from now. So if you do have a chance, uh, please uh, join us again for that too. Thank you.